Welcome along, everyone, to something a little bit different and a little bit special. This is the GT1 Sports Club by Curbstone, an opportunity for some of the most expensive hypercars in the world to show themselves around this Barcelona circuit on a Sunday of the finals of the World uh, GT European Challenge. An exclusive track day for the most exclusive of vehicles. And in our field today, we have the Pagani Huara R. We'll have an, an opportunity to hear, most importantly, this fantastic V12 Mercedes engine that is mounted to this car. We have six, would you believe, of these vehicles. As you can see on the graphic, numbers produced 30. That's around 20%. And I'm not sure if every single one of those six is out on circuit, but quite a remarkable number uh, in the paddock. And listen to this. Revs to 9,000 revs. V12 Mercedes engine producing 850 brake horsepower. And all of these cars, every single one of them that we'll see on circuit, running on Pirelli slick tyres. It's the first opportunity for these drivers to get out on circuit this weekend. There'll be a second session uh, this afternoon. And then they have a full day to themselves tomorrow as well. The first two rounds of the GT1 Sports Club, which was launched as a prologue here last year, happened at Paul Ricard. So this is a new track to many of these drivers, and they do have the opportunity to head over to the Yas Marina circuit in December as well to round out the Sports Club for 2022. And think of this very much as an exclusive meeting of the most expensive hypercars in the world. 3.5 million pounds for a Pagani Huara R. And similar in value for the Lamborghini SCV12. I counted four of those uh, in the paddock here, which means we've got 10% of all numbers produced. And the Lamborghini Surprisingly, for a Lamborghini, it doesn't necessarily sound as spectacular as the uh, Pagani. Usually, Lamborghinis are the most spectacular vehicle. It does have a V12 engine, six and a half litres, producing a similar power uh, to the Pagani. And maybe once it's able to really unleash We'll hear the potential from that engine a little more, but it is not uh, not revving to the exact same uh, high-pitched rev as we've heard already. When you sit it in the paddock and hear that Pagani go past, it doesn't seem as though it can possibly be a, a vehicle. It must be a Formula One car or some kind of single-seater. Not too much details given on the drivers of these cars. Many, of course, would be the owners of these cars, and therefore many of these drivers will be very, very important people around the world. They are here to take pleasure in driving some of the most expensive vehicles, or their most expensive vehicle in the world. A specially built hangar in Italy was made for the Pagani Huara R to be stored in. So many of these uh, hypercars not actually stored within the facilities of the owners' homes. It is something that, for instance, Ferrari insist upon. You're not allowed to take them home. Pagani say that you can, but of course they've all been brought here to Barcelona by the Pagani factory running the uh, running the, the effort of running six of these vehicles and of course 
telemetry and changes can be made to these cars to make them feel better. There's driver tuition available to all the drivers as well. Homeworld watching here does seem as though it's the one that gets the most use. Lots of uh, tape over various parts of the car to protect it. So we've seen the Pagani, we've seen the Lamborghini, and third car in the back of shot there is the McLaren Senna. Just one McLaren Senna uh, with us today. And again, a similar 825 brake horsepower. The most popular car around, uh, with 75 examples of the Senna GTR. And the GTR is the track only version of the Senna. The, the slightly less souped up version can be uh, driven on the roads, but all of these vehicles are not road legal. The Senna GTR itself uh, also not road legal. Probably also the, the oldest of the vehicles being released in 2018 as a precursor and as an idea to for McLaren to then go and join the uh, World Endurance Championship. And now here is the oldest of the vehicles out on circuit from the late 70s, Stefan Rattel's Porsche 935. Unfortunately, Stefan has a meeting, so wasn't able to drive today. Uh, so lucky Mr. Fanatec, Thomas Jakemeyer, who recently took victory at the Red Bull Ring in his Toro Rosso Uh, Yakimaya recently driving his 2008 Toro Rosso, uh, the car that won uh, the Monza Grand Prix back in 2008 with Sebastian Vettel. He now owns that car uh, and campaigns it in Boss GP. Uh, so Yakimaya with plenty of experience driving high-powered machines. Now the 1970s 935, the original vehicle, this a a body shell of a 935, a tribute to uh, that incredibly successful vehicle, but a modern version of it. Very, very unique vehicle itself. It looks as though probably one of uh, Thomas Yakamai's um, marketing team in the passenger seat. A lot of these cars do actually have passenger seats, mainly for the uh, drivers to have some kind of tuition. The interior of, of all of them complete carbon fibre. Unfortunately, the, uh, the noise of the Porsche rather lost behind the squeal of the Pagani uh, Huara, which was just ahead. So back to that McLaren quickly then. A four litre twin turbo V8 uh, in that vehicle as opposed to the V12s we've got around the rest of the circuit. And it was built so that if the regulations that were suspected to come into uh, Le Mans, the World Endurance Championship, uh, happened, and you needed to have a road car, a road going, road legal version uh, to develop the race version, uh, then McLaren could, in theory, base their racing Le Mans prototype on the Senna. That was the uh, philosophy behind it, uh, released in 2018, so five years ago. And ultimately then, so far, we've not heard of the McLaren name dipping its uh, toe in that direction. The Senna has spawned various iterations. The GTR that we're seeing here on slick tyres in full track day configuration. There's the Senna LM and the Senna GTR LM. So there is a G there is a road going version of that car, uh, which is the GTR LM. However, only five of those were built, and they were specifically coloured in tribute of the Le Mans winning 1995 uh, McLaren. Of course, that was the McLaren F1 GTR, centrally located driver. Back to the Huara. Huarata. 
a Peruvian wind god. That is where the name comes from. We'll turn up the sound and have a listen. Pure sound from this Mercedes V12. Six litre V12 engine specifically designed for Pagani by Mercedes by HWA. Revving to 9,000 revs. Run through a specific six speed manual gearbox, sequential gearbox, I should say. The car itself fully carbon fibre, so only weighing just over a thousand kilos, just over a tonne. served as a predecessor to the Zonda. There was a Zonda in the paddock. I'm not sure if that Zonda has come out onto circuit. The Zonda R um, initially released it back in 2009. But when you start nosing around the uh, car, you realize just how very specific the car is inside. The Zonda, if you remember, had a very fancy, very different interior to it. The inside of these Juarez looking very similar to what you would expect from any uh, hypercar. Almost a rec rectangular steering wheel, carbon fibre everywhere, and lots and lots of buttons and knobs to twiddle. This is just the uh, first 25-minute session of two today, and then they have full access to the circuit tomorrow. A proper track day experience run by SRO and Curbstone Events. Curbstone based in Paul Rica, so many of, the, of these events happening at the circuit in the Azores. In the Azores? That's a completely different place to Azores. Six million plus taxes. The Huara uh, R. So that actually is a little cheaper than the Lamborghini. This concept launched by Stefan Rattel uh, last July with the pro the prologue at this circuit last year. opportunity for 
any hypercar uh, to come and join not just the on-circuit entertainment, but also, of course, the off-track VIP hospitality and, and hotels and the ability to mix with uh, like-minded owners of these incredible vehicles. The fact that we've got six of these Paganis here, 20% of all that will be built, is a bit mad. Senza SC V12, six and a half litre V12, 300 kilos heavier than the Quara, weighing in at uh, 13,750 kilos. Of course, originally based in the Huracan, as so many of the Lamborghini hypercars are. hardly running cleanly such as the tentative nature of the drivers that are tickling the throttle around this Barcelona circuit sounds a bit better now that he's got his foot down down the main straight here in Barcelona and uh, cleared the overrun the big difference I suppose between the Aguara and the Lamborghini in terms of their V12 engines is that the Lamborghinis is mounted longitudinally to allow for the gearbox. And therefore, the way that the air enters the engine, quite different to that of what we would usually expect. This concept's a bit of a dream for Stefan Rattel, an opportunity to get him his uh, 935 out onto some of these amazing circuits. A bit of a wiggle there from Thomas Jakemeyer. The man behind Fanatec, who has been our championship sponsor now for the two seasons. And the logo's around the final corner. So the 935 second generation, based on a 991 GT2 RS, and you'll hear a lot more about Porsches uh, when David Addison takes over uh, this job in the second of our sessions. He'll be able to tell you every single centimetre of the Porsche that's out there. Known as a, or resembling bodywork from the 935 78 version, the 1978 car. And obviously as a tribute to that car. The LED tail lights on the car come from the 919 hybrid LMP1 race car. A little fact for you.
part of the ownership of um, having a Pagani Huara R is that you get Mark Lapelli and Manueli Piro as uh, driver trainers. And actually, when you when you do have a vehicle of this kind of nature, especially one with slick tyres, all of these cars with slick tyres, driver coaching and how to deal and how to get the best out of these cars is almost vital. There is no point having a car like this and driving it like you would drive on the normal roads because you simply will find it a struggle. You'll certainly not feel what it's capable of and therefore the adrenaline rush of really driving it hard. This one's being driven pretty well, actually. Control, traction control settings for the drivers to settle the car down as much as possible. Doesn't mean you put it onto 12 and have the electrics uh, interfere with everything you do. You turn it down as much as you possibly can. On the Curbstone events, there is the ability for timing and scoring as well, even though these are non-competitive sessions. They all, of course all have data loggers for the teams to be able to see exactly what the car is doing, if the driver's so interested in times at all. I would suggest that this number one car perhaps is. everything inside that vehicle is fully customizable for the driver for the owner various aerodynamic movable aerodynamic devices in the vehicle as well some of which you can see others of which are within the front bodywork and aerodynamics inside the car with the Pirelli slick tyre, which takes some getting used to. If you've never driven a slick tyre before, you really do need to understand how to bring them up into temperature, how to get the best out of them when they're at temperature. It isn't simply just go out on circuit and go as hard as you can straight away. One that will uh, almost always end in a disaster. As temperature gets into the slick tyre, you are offered more confidence, you're offered more grip, and you suddenly the more you lean on it, the more you generate temperature, and the better they become. So there is certainly a way to learn. A little bit of understeer into uh, turn 10 there from the 63 Lamborghini. And again, if you haven't leaned on the car, then you're not generating that temperature to find the grip. Definitely being driven a little bit more sprightly, the uh, 63, from when we joined it earlier. That seems to be the end of the session. I'm not sure if I've seen a chequered flag, but I've certainly seen lots of cars coming into pit lane. And now a GT1 Sports Club by Curbstone Events then comes to a close. They'll be going back out onto circuit again a little bit later on, and you'll be able to join David Addison for that one. Thanks for joining us and see you later on.